Welcome to yet another episode of HVACR Verse. I'm your host, Kevin Stiles. Um, I know I haven't had any videos for a few weeks now. I've been kind of trying to prepare with some work stuff and the weather's starting to pick up. And the heat here in Arizona has finally hit. We are in the triple digits and we're probably going to stay there till the end of August. So, with that being said, I came across some things recently and it's been kind of happening. And I'm kind of curious what everyone else's opinion or what they see across the country on this stuff is. And what I'm talking about is zone systems. And what I see a lot of here in Arizona on new builds is zone systems. These builders will throw a single stage system in and zone it and not even like attempt to zone it properly. And it's, I'm, I'm going to throw it 30% onto the installing contractors and the rest onto the engineer and development team and the builders for these new homes because it's their design and they just supply the equipment for these installation companies. So I'm going to give a little bit of a recent issue that we had to deal with. We had a longtime customer a couple years ago. We installed a mini split in his garage. Uh, we installed, when we were out there, he wanted to install some wireless thermostats that have some fancy features on his house. It's a three, three zone system and it is a single stage Linux, uh, furnace gas split. So we, uh, we're, we're doing this whole run around with this new homeowner. So the previous homeowner called us in and said, hey, I want a maintenance done. And we weren't privy to any other issues of, hey, the system isn't operating. He just said he wanted maintenance done because he's having a home inspection, whatever. We go out there, a uh, technician shows up and does a maintenance, finds the systems low on charge. There was like a 12 degree split across the evaporator, which is horrid. Um, and what he does is he finds a leak in the coil. It's a Lennox, so shocker, right? He gives the customer the estimate to replace the evaporator coil and customer goes forward with it because he's having, selling the house. I need to get this fixed. System's like six years old. Coil's under warranty, but the labor's not. So we just went ahead and did it and got it taken care of. No one ever mentioned about a zone system not working or a damper not working. And this was back in April. So let's fast forward to now we're in June. New, home, new homeowners just moved in, been there for two or three weeks. And this is in June. And he calls up the office and he's irate. He says that we didn't do this inspection correctly, which we were out there for inspection. And technician shows up and he kind of didn't handle the situation very well. He shows up and goes, hey, where's your outdoor unit? Okay. Yeah, you can't zone this. This is no good. That's your problem. You have a single stage system zoned. I don't know who said what because there's a lot of he said, she said between the customer and the technician. But customer calls in and says he's upset. We didn't do our job. And he's like, I'm going to I'm going to sue you guys. This is a true story. He literally said he was going to sue us. And I was like, well, you can't sue us for something we didn't do. And he goes, well, you guys did an inspection and you said everything was operating. I go, we did a maintenance and we didn't check all these zones out. But I can come out there and check things out. So another technician and I, we go out there this past Friday and we're checking it out. So I go, so what's the issue? What is going on? Let's get to the root problem. He says, well, I had some guests over and they were on this side of the house and they set the thermostat to 72. So I said, okay. And he goes, I keep my room at 7980 and I keep the main living area at 7980. I said, okay. So we have an idea of what's going on. So I go and I verify, I lower the thermostat where he said they lowered and I raise his thermostat up to make sure it's set for 80 and not calling and the one in the main room. So we go up there and we verify the damper for the main living area and the master bedroom area and we verify they're closed. Now, I'm like, well, let's just test something. So I go downstairs. He already has a ladder set up in his master bedroom. I can feel some air bleeding by. And I already knew what was going on. I just wanted to confirm and do my due diligence and make him feel 
like we were doing the right thing. Instead of me just going, yeah, this is your problem. Out of here. You need to do this or this to make it right. So I go to the register in his master bedroom and there's some air flowing out of it. It's not like roaring out of the register, but it's coming out. So I go to the thermostat and the technician's up in the crawl space or attic, whatever you want to call it. And I go, hey, I'm going to open this one up, verify it opens up. These are power closed dampers, so power to close them. And then they're spring open. So I lower it down and I go over to the register. As soon as I hear the thermostat click, I can just feel the air start just pouring out of these registers. And I go, okay, this makes sense. I know exactly what's going on here. So I go back up in the crawl space. I set the thermostat back to like 82 or something. And I go, what's our static pressure? So we put the static probes in. We put one in the return plenum, one before the coil, and then one after the coil. So with only one zone open before the coil, we had a total static of like 1.3. System's doing nothing for one, and it's struggling. After the coil, we had like 0.98 of total static. So I force all the zones open from the thermostats and our statics hovering around. I want to say it was like 0.65 or something. And I think the furnace calls for it's capable of 0.7 on static. So I already know the issue. It's got blow by going on, but I want to show the customer. I go over and I say, hey, you have your ladder set up in here already. I want you to go up to that register. And he goes, yeah, there's air coming out of it. And I go, okay, I'm going to lower this thermostat down. And I want you to stay there. So I lower it down to 77. It, it calls for cooling. And he goes, oh, man, that's a ton of air coming out of there now. And I go, so here's the problem. It's The dampers are closing, but there's air being forced by because it's trying to relieve that static pressure. I go, you have no bypass. You have no zone dump nothing and you have too much static and it's going to continue to do that and he he's expecting us to just kind of like the the grace of our hearts to just do this for free and i'm like that's not going to happen especially in the middle of summer but i look at the options that we can do for him contemplated on doing a bypass but the problem is with bypasses on single stage systems where you don't have a variable speed blower is you're just recirculating cold air right back into the return and it causes equipment to short cycle and start freeze up. And being a gas furnace, the other problem is it's going to dump that hot air right back into the heat exchanger and it's just going to trip the limits and it's going to continue to do that. So I tell them, hey, give me over the weekend to think about how I want to proceed with this. I'll give you an estimate on Monday. So I come up with an estimate on Monday to do a dump 12 inch dump off the supply with a barometric damper to a common area that is not going to affect their comfort level you know so that's what i gave him as an option so with that option i said this is without changing equipment this is the most beneficial option and i gave him the other option of if you really want to make this effective without spending a ton of money on a variable speed system uh two stage would be the way to go to where we put a different zone control in and we do hey look when only one zone is calling it's only going to run one stage and that runs the blower at 60 percent and the compressor at 60 percent and that way it's not overloading it and when it calls for two or more zones then it puts it into second stage and it's all or none you right then i said the most beneficial way to zone is to do a variable speed system with modulating dampers. But once again, that's going to be costly. And he's just not happy with it. And I said, let me just give you your options when it comes to the time of what I want to do with this. But it brings me to the point of how many people are seeing this across the country? Because I'm from Florida. Air conditioning in Florida is different than air conditioning in Arizona. Air conditioning is different in Iowa than it is in Arizona, vice versa. So here, what they try to do is they try to put, this guy has a 2,500 square foot home, and in reality, it should have had two, three tons split up amongst the house. Single story, 2,500 square foot home. 
So to get their energy star efficiency rating, they put a four ton unit on and zone it. The builder's doing everything at the cheapest possible rate they can do it, which kind of sucks because this isn't like a super cheap neighborhood. It's not like a fancy multi-million dollar home, but it's not a cheap home. Now, it bothers me because the good contractors like us or you guys, we wind up dealing with this. And then people think that we're the bad ones or they think that these companies that are installing the equipment are just complete hacks. When it's not really the case, they're just doing as they're told. The builder gives them, hey, this is the equipment you're going to put in. This is the duct work you need to do. And that's it. So 30% of the blame I put upon these installing companies for these new build homes. And then 70% I put on the builder and the engineers and the design team because it is complete trash. And it's never set up correctly. I, I haven't yet to see these track homes be set up correctly. Now, when I moved into my house, I replaced the equipment. I did upsize a little bit, but with two-stage equipment, and I had a, th I had a three-ton and a three-and-a-half ton. I went to a four-ton upstairs and a three-and-a-half ton downstairs. I like to keep my house cold. My equipment doesn't short cycle. My electric bill is not outrageous for what I'm trying to cool. 3,600 square feet. I think I pay like 300 bucks. I think my highest electric bill last summer was 400 bucks. But it's staged correctly, and I'm not giving it all or none. So it's not running 100% all the time. I tried zoning it uh, on the upstairs. Didn't work out very well. Kind of irritated me a little bit because these dampers are garbage, in my opinion, and they fell. So with that being said... I'm just kind of curious what everybody sees across the country. Leave some comments in there. Is this just an Arizona thing or are we seeing this in Texas? Are we seeing this in um, Wisconsin? Are we seeing this in um, Missouri? I'm just curious what everybody sees across the country. Um, but I want to show you guys something. Like this isn't made up. Like you're not supposed to zone a single stage system. Yes, you can do it. Is it effective? N to a degree, but you shorten the life of the equipment and you drastically reduce its efficiency. So what would have been like a 14 sear, you now turn into a 12 sear, if only one zone calls. It's just hot garbage and you're not really cooling the house properly. So I'm gonna move over to um, this right here. And this is just a quick Google search. Uh, this is one that I found. It says, single stage systems shouldn't be zoned. I don't know this company. I just found this real quick. Um, single stage systems cannot be zoned because they operate 100% capacity whenever they're on. This means you can't reduce the energy use in any when zone system is at full capacity. Bypass dampers and ducts shouldn't be used. I don't even know what that means. Um, but bypass dampers can work to a degree if they're set up correctly. Um, a dump zone is more or less the most effective way on a single stage system, but it's really not the way to do it. Let's find another source, see what it says. Like this one I found. Once again, I don't know these companies. So here we go. Um, this one's saying you can't zone single stage, but it's saying you can do two stage or modulating to zone. Single stage system, single stage equipment has only one level of heat or cold output to the condition of all living spaces. If you try to zone that equipment system can't ramp itself down sufficiently to provide the lower BTUs or CFM of airflow needed to condition smaller spaces. This can cause major problems with the system overheating or freezing up. Like I said, two stage equipment can work at 60% capacity. Like I said, so when you're only using one zone, you are saving 40% on your gas and electric usage. When you have both zones on then the system ramps back up to hundred percent, to accommodate the entire living space modulating system used for homes with three zones or more can vary 40 to 100% output, which if you have a true modulating system or variable speed system like um, uh, the Carrier Infinity or the Bryant Evolution or the Train XV, um, but like everywhere I see, uh, like this one here, if you have standard single speed HVC system with multiple zones, you need a bypass damper to improve operations, save money, and improve airflow. Not really the right thing to do. Um, train, I think Train even says not to zone single stage equipment. 
But let's see. Uh, yeah, I, I can't remember where I, I had a train article from before that we use for uh, when we quote out equipment showing, hey, and it's from train saying, hey, single stage systems, we don't recommend zoning. And they say two stage, we recommend if you have it zoned that you only do two zones. And if you want more than two zones, they recommend going to a variable speed system. But like I said, I'm curious what everybody else sees because this is what I see. And I've been seeing it for years. Starting back in like 2010 is when I started seeing these single stage systems getting zoned and it got worse and worse and worse. And now it's at a point now where these home builders are trying to get away with the cheapest possible and cut corners and we're getting blamed. How do you guys handle that? So I know that everyone has their preference. I personally don't think Bosch equipment can be zoned properly. They're not a true variable speed system. They use some kind of algorithm based upon superheat, suction pressure, et cetera, that it tries to modulate the compressor. If you're going to do a real good quality zone system and downsize equipment, a true variable speed system is the way to go, whether that be York or uh, Lennox's uh, variable speed system. Um, I, I personally feel the better of the variable speed systems I've seen a Goodman variable speed system. It, it works to a degree, but it's not a true variable speed system. Like it has a certain amount of levels of comfort cooling, um, like train and carrier, say like 800 different comfort levels, right? Train, I've seen like where that compressor, literally I can see slowly ramping up and ramping down. The blower's changing. It's communicating, talking back and forth, saying my humidity's here. My, my uh, supply temp is here. My return temp is here. My space temp is this. This is what I'm trying to achieve. This is what the customer wants for uh, humidity. So I'm going to slow this blower down. I'm going to slow the compressor down a bit to pull some of that humidity out, but not make it too cold in here. Those are true variable speed systems. I think carrier and train have really got good at that market. It just sucks that everything, the repair on it is super expensive. But once again, that's part of life. The fancier you get, you buy a Bugatti, it's going to cost you a million dollars just to keep it maintained, right? You spend a million dollars to spend another million dollars to maintain it. It's a little exaggeration, but um, just let me know, guys, what you see out there. Uh, I like to know in the comments. Uh, just let me know. And I hope everyone is ready for this summer because I think it's going to be a late start to summer but a long summer. I think it's going to last pretty long this year. I think it's going to end in October. Like end of October, beginning of November, we're going to see those hot, hot days for a while just because of how late we got started with this year. Like I said, we just started hitting the triple digits here in Arizona in the past week, and we're finally going to be consistently over 100. And I think next week we're over 110 for almost every day. Just let me know. Put in the comments and happy HVAC and everyone and enjoy this summer. If you like this video or any of the other videos, hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and as usual, happy HVACing.